Happy Friday! Today is September 8th. It's Friday. You made it. Um, and like I said, live stream number 53. Did I say that? 58? 53? Today is live stream number 53. And uh, today we're going to talk about what's new, what was new in the September uh, 2017 update with, uh, with Fusion 360. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to join today. If you are jumping in here on the live stream, and I'm just gonna move down so I can see the chat. Um, it's been a few days, been a few weeks since I uh, I was on the last time. I had a trip to uh, to San Francisco, uh, meet with all the the people at the headquarters. It was a great trip. Uh, appreciate all the people who reached out to me to see how that went. Um, but yeah, today we're going to jump in and just talk about some of the new things that was in the release that was released Wednesday, so a few days ago. Um, I just want to show you those to you. If you didn't see the What's New update that uh, Bryce and Aaron also uh, did, what was great. Um, so let's jump into uh, to Fusion. So I'm just going to flip over here, find my mouse. All right. So uh, the first thing that you might have noticed uh, that is new is that we now got a uh, a little button up here uh, with a little plus sign in it, um, and uh, that will open a new uh, document. Um, somebody from developments probably thought, "Hey, that's a great idea when it comes to uh, to working with um, um, with." Uh, with a web browser, so why not also put that inside of Fusion? But I like, uh, what did we do in the past if you're brand new to Fusion? Well, we used to go up here, say file, new design. We'll do the same thing. Uh, but now you got like a little uh, plus sign here that will let you, um, that will let you you do that. So that is, uh, is, is a nice little handy thing. Um, what else is new? Well, another thing we got was in the sweep command, Right here, uh, we got a, um, uh, a couple of new functions. So let's do something sweep-like. So I'm gonna go up here, create a new sketch, and I'm gonna start as a sweep. You need two sketches. You need a profile, you need a path. So let's start with the profile, because that makes most sense. I'm gonna start here, and I'm just gonna hit alpha line. I'm gonna draw a line out here. Um, yeah. And you know what? Let's do. I should probably have thought about what I wanted to draw here. Do that. Uh, let's do a dimension on here. Let's make it two inches. And uh, this one here is still going like that. So let's make those two equal. And it's fully defined. Okay, cool. S is my shortcut key. And I'm going to do a three point arc. And I'm going to fully define this sketch here for you, just because you should always fully define your sketches. Okay, so that's sketch number number one. Turn the origin on. Then we, so this is our profile. Let's do our path. So I'm going to open a sketch on another plane. So the first, the first one, let me rotate. The first one I did on this plane. I hope that made sense. And let's do the next one on this plane. So new sketch on this face. And I'm really just going to draw a line across here and uh, we could do something like a little bit of an arc segment like that and I'm not gonna define that just to be a just to be a rebel let's stop that sketch oops spin around a little bit all right so uh, a sweep um sitting around in here create sweep and uh, you will see you get some different options in here. Now, the new function is in single path. There's two different paths. I'll show you path and guide rail in a second. Single path, first is asking for the profile. So we'll select that one. And then it's selecting for the path and we'll select that one. And then you will see that it's kind of sweeping the profile um, along the path. But it's kind of cool. Uh, you will also see if you've never used the sweep command before, um, you can grab this handle and you can actually roll it back. You see you get a distance over here, so you can actually adjust that. But what was new was that they added a taper angle and a twist angle. So uh, so that's kind of neat. Now if I go in here to the taper angle, and let's do like 5 degrees, 
you can see how it's growing on the screen. So it added, uh, it made a taper on it. Um, we can also go minus if you wanted to go the other way. So now it becomes like more like a horn. Now it's important to notice if I go and look at the front view, and I hope this shows up at the screen, that it actually puts taper on all the sides, right? So you just got to think about that. So it's still, if I turn the table to zero, see there, I'm going to rotate a little bit. See, here's kind of like our sweep that is following that sweep there. Uh, so if I go to the front view, we're kind of like looking on it there. Well, as soon as I put that minus five, you'll see that it's tapering all of them. So you can't control that. But that's that's cool. That's, that's good. This was a definitely a good enhancement. The other thing we got is a twist. Now, I should maybe put a little bit more thought into to what I, I drew up here. So if you look at the Watch New video that Bryce, where Bryce was talking about this, uh, then um, you will uh, you will see that he kind of like used a staircase. So what if I put a twist angle in here of like, let's say 180, you can see how it's rotating, it's twisting um, the part, and I think it's twisting around the path. It looks like it. I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm making that up as I go here. But it looks like it's twisting around your your path. Um, I don't know. I actually don't know how far I can go. I can go whatever you want here. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's twisting around your path. So you can see here how it's, it's twisting. So that was, that was new um, in here. Now... Um, those two, the taper angle and the twist angle, and the, the twist angle. What is what is cool? Now, um, I got a question from somebody the other day who emailed me. By the way, email address is down in the description area of the video. Um, if you have any future topics you would like to see, make sure you send me an email about those. Uh, like I said, I was just off a couple of weeks. Now we are, should be back on track again with uh, the, these daily uh, live streams. So, um, you know, send me any topics that you would, uh, that you would like to see. So, um, the one person sent me a question about using, uh, sweet, uh, using splines as your path. Um, and that's perfectly, uh, okay to do. Uh, I would probably normally, this was in regards to like some hoses coming out of an engine, um, you know, splines are fine to use if you are trying to kind of like have an organic flow. But if, you know, if it's like um, many times, I would probably default to lines and arcs. Um, but what I want to show while I'm in here is I want to show you guide rails also. So what is guide rails? Well, guide rails lets us kind of like manipulate. And this is maybe another live stream. Um, guide rails lets us manipulate the already shape, guide the shape a little bit. So uh, let me do this. Let me just hit OK to this and delete this. Uh, I'm getting a little bit off topic, but you know me. Um, so let me go in here and um, create another sketch. I'm going to create a sketch up here on top. And I'm, this time, let's go ahead and do a spline. And I'm just going to create something from here to over here, for example. And on splines, you get these guide handles that you can manipulate. Um, and you probably, if you've seen some of the live streams, we talked about splines uh, in the past. I'm just having a spline right here. Uh, let me turn my two other sketches back on. Um, and we can kind of like see uh, all three sketches. Now, if I go back into the sweep and we go to path plus guide rails, then we get three options. So again, the profile is the same, path is the same, and then let's go in and select this guide rail we just created. And of course, I don't get anything. I think that's because it's too short. Uh, let's just do this. Because we are actually pulling in that model. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Go in and try that again. So we're still doing the same thing as we did before. We have a, a profile and we then are running it along a path. And then we're, we, we're trying to guide, oops, we're trying to guide that shape. And uh, dang it, now I don't want to do it. What is typical? 
This is what I love to do with these lives, right? Okay. That's what keeps me on my toes, I think. So now I get to troubleshoot this. What a lot of people told me they like when I'm struggling. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Maybe I just need to do my uh, my homework a little bit better. There we go. So I just needed to adjust <laughs> the spline a little bit. So um, let me go up on top here. So actually what happened, if you remember what we saw before, uh, was that this was just going straight uh, out here and just following um, our, our path up here. But now where we have this guide rail, this spline we drew, um, you actually can see that we have that is kind of like following that uh, that shape, and that gives us, um, of course, our there you um, give us some flexibility on how we can we can manipulate uh, the shape like this. So if we go in here, let's go back into our spline here and see if we can, you know, if we go in here, we manipulate. Let me pull this one out a little bit. Let's make this thing a little bit more bent like that and we have manipulated that shape uh, more like that so that that is uh is what these guide rails does that was not really uh what was new but i just when i was in the sweep i had to i had to, sh to show it we will do a live stream on that um another time because another where i have actually used it maybe a little bit more um power is in the loft command so maybe we can do a live stream that all right so um uh, yapping about new functions the plus key and uh, and the the angle now and one that really caught a lot of people's attention i think was um this simplify state that uh bryce and aaron showed it was aaron who showed it in the simulation workspace so uh, some of you guys maybe remember, if you watch these live streams, you remember this model. We did a kind of like a mold core from this one. I can't remember what live stream it was. Um, but if we go into the simulation space, and the simulation space is actually something that you and I are going to have to talk a lot more on. I definitely have to do some live streams about this um, for sure soon, I promise. What was added in the simulation workspace? was this simplify space. And um, I actually heard a couple of the development team says that they want this to be their, their own workspace. So that could be interesting. Um, but what you can do in here is you can simplify a model. This is something you do a lot in, in simulation workspace where you want to get rid of certain features on there. So if I go in here, say remove features, you can actually highlight different things that you want the software to find and remove. So for example, if I just select uh, the fillets and I then select the model, um, of course I selected a fairly complex model, uh, but you will see that you get this slide bar here where you can control um, the size of the fillets that I now want to, uh, to remove. Um, so if I place it right here, we can kind of like see some of them are are highlighted some of them are not if I then hit delete uh, then it will go in and uh, and and remove these fillets now I gotta say a couple of things about this model first of all this model was imported directly I think it's originally like a step on IGES files so it wasn't even modeled up inside of fusion it was actually imported um, and now the software is smart enough to actually go in and and eliminate uh, depending on size, uh, these different features. Now, it takes a second, um, but, I mean, that makes sense. This, the software right now is doing all the thinking for us. If you remember when we did this core, uh, we actually um, we actually removed a lot of these manually. Remember that? Um, so, so that's pretty neat. So um, we don't see anything right now, but one of the things you just maybe noticed is that we actually got a, uh, a feature down here so we can roll back and forth. And now if we zoom in over here, you should actually see that uh, depending on the size that I picked there, that the fillets are 
um, now been been removed depending on on their sites. Now, I, I I'm gonna say that this is not a a magic button. I think. I mean, I I I, I haven't tested it out uh, completely, um, but I, I have a feeling that if I said remove all fillets, it might still be a couple of fillets that it couldn't do because of the of the calculation. But uh, it definitely is very handy and actually. You know, coming from a cam standpoint, um, man, I uh, I would love that love that feature in the cam workspace. Uh, how many times uh, have you ever gotten a model in where you actually wished you could remove all the fillets, uh, you know, or the threads uh, in there? So that could definitely be be something that would that was super super handy. Um, a couple of other things that I probably should say is that um, behind the scenes. Um, somebody told me from the development team that they actually they fixed over 300 bugs in the last release. Um, a lot of them had to do with joints and things like that. So um, you know they even though that there wasn't a long list of new features in the software, I think that this uh, September release coming upon the sheet metal one. Um, that that they kind of like went in there and cleaned a bunch of things up so that's that's awesome love that um by the way that reminds me if you watch the sheet metal uh that i did uh before i took my two week break um i talked about in there that you could do like sheet metal use it for something like cardboard boxes taylor stein did a tutorial on that and he actually used parameters what is something we've also talked about uh, here before. So if you go up to the Fusion 360 uh, YouTube channel, uh, look for Taylor Stein's uh, cardboard box with the sheet metal uh, tool. That was definitely, uh, you know, that was that was a good one. So um, back from a two week uh, off here, um, and I just had to, to send this one out here just so you could see if you missed uh, Bryce and Aaron's um, and, and mine uh, update video that you just got a, a little bit of a closer look at, at some of the functions. So I hope that that was helpful. And then you got to see me playing around with splines and guide rails, screwing around with that. So uh, that is good. Should be back for uh, for Monday. That's the plan. And we should be back to, uh, to, to these daily ones. I might try to play a little bit with the time, though. Uh, some of you guys have told me that uh, this time slot is not the best for you. So we might try to do it a couple of hours earlier, maybe, and see how that goes. So... Thank you so much for taking the time. We have like 53 people in the live stream. Really appreciate it. Uh, you're taking the time out of your busy day to join this. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much. Don't forget, go down to the description area, grab my email address, download the free CNC handbook, send me an email with any topics you would like to see, and uh, we will start attacking those in Fusion 360. Until the next time, I hope you have an awesome weekend. And I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast and I'm going to jump into the live stream chat and say hi to everybody. Take care, guys. Thank you so much.